So we've already discussed Pass 3.1 as a whole, but now we're getting specific. We're gonna break down the cast and going to look specifically into the low tiers. Though no one wants to admit it, everybody loves a low tier. This is gonna be a fun one. They're the underdogs of Smash that we don't get to see that often. These are the fresh faces we don't feel as threatened by. And in every Smash game, there's always a handful of beloved and iconic characters that get trapped in low tier hell forever. You might be tempted to skip this video since low tiers are the least viable characters. However, Nintendo has been heavy on the buffs with Ultimate. So if you skip this tier, you're missing out on some of the biggest changes in the game. And I'll be sad. But seriously, Nintendo has buffed some characters straight into competitive viability. Since most characters got some touch-ups, let's get started with the characters that Nintendo left behind. These unfortunate souls got no love from Sakurai in a patch where many of their low tier friends were buffed. That means that they are generally even worse than before. So if you're Kirby, Corrin, or Ridley Main, we salute you. But unfortunately, there's nothing to see here. Ridley struggles from an exploitable recovery and a giant hurtbox that's very easy to combo. Meanwhile, Corrin doesn't do a lot of damage and didn't get any buffs to help her stack it up. As for Kirby, hey, we already talked about what's holding Kirby back in our last video and nothing's really changed. Let's not belabor it. Let's just remember the good times we had with Kirby instead. A lot of other characters receive small buffs that are useful, but not enough. While most other Pokemon have pushed up to at least mid-tier, Jigglypuff and Incineroar are stuck in deep low tier. Both of these characters got solid buffs that make their jabs more reliable than multi-hitting. In Smash, <laughs> this isn't nothing. Jab resets are important to a lot of characters. For example, Jigglypuff can jab reset into Sing and reset combos more reliably. However, Nintendo handed out jab buffs like candy. Piranha Plant and Me Brawler got similar jab buffs that also aren't enough to make these characters move up tiers. The Pits got a multi-hit buff on some moves and Dark Pit got some end lag reduction on his side special, which is nice but not much. King K. Rool grabs the edge more quickly, which isn't going to make him win big tournaments outside of Australia anyways. Isabel got a tweak which made her rod catch on more frames but not on the ledge as well, which is actually an overall nerf. Does Nintendo have something against the Q characters? <laughs> Now, let's talk about a few characters that got buffs worth mentioning, although they are still trapped in bottom tier. Bowser Jr. got quality of life buffs across the board that make him more fun to play, but not much better. His side special starts up faster and feels smoother, and his neutral special works well in the air. His up smash goes earlier too. These changes might be a first step in getting him out of E tier, but for now, they're not quite enough. He still doesn't have a lot of great options in neutral or on the defensive. And that's a shame because he's one of the best troll characters in the game. Look at this. Thanks. I hate it. If you're looking for the cool low tier character, look no further than Samus. In this patch, Nintendo buffed one of her coolest features, her flamethrower. Samus uses a flamethrower effect for her forward air and up smash. Her up smash is good when you read an opponent. Her forward air is pretty great to use at the end of strings or to keep someone off stage. Now that both moves work properly, Samus is looking a little sharper. Unfortunately, she's still not in her prime as much as she's in her other M, and we're keeping her in low tier for now. The biggest name in the meaningful but not that meaningful buffs category is the champ himself, Little Mac. Nintendo is really trying to push a special kind of design on gaming's original underdog. Good on the ground and completely terrible in the air. If they keep it up, they're gonna make sure Mac stays an underdog. Smash is a platform fighter, so recovery and aerial movement are vital to the game. There's no real way around it. Mac doesn't have the great answers to some of the most common questions the game has to offer. In 3.1, Mac got a few nice combos, some buffs to tilts, and extra super armor on smash attacks. For most characters, that would be nothing to scoff at. Even for this character, it's worth noting, it's just not worth fearing. All of Mac's biggest flaws are still there, and they're so big that they mute all of his strengths at the top level. Little Mac either needs an insane ground game that rivals the S tiers, or a recovery that isn't this. Finally, okay, let's talk about the big winners, the ones who have climbed out of low tier. We've got four big names here, Rosalina, Bayonetta, Ryu, and Ken. All four of these characters have some serious fighting game clout. Rosa and Bayou were dominant tiers in the Smash 4 landscape, while Ryu and Ken are about as OG as they can get in the world of fighting games. Let's talk Bayonetta first. The queen of Smash 4, the killer off the top, the drinker of tears, the baddest witch, few characters are as stylish as Bayonetta. Unfortunately, few characters were hated as her as well. In Smash 4, playing Bayonetta could get you booed. And during Nintendo's debut of the early build of the game, Bayonetta literally did get booed. With Sakurai in the audience. Yikes. 
In the early stages of Ultimate, Bayonetta's moves were so nerfed that they just didn't work. This was all on top of general meta problems Bayonetta suffered from. Difficulty with zoners, trouble and disadvantage, and struggling to find kills. Bayonetta was so humbled at the start of Ultimate that the hate actually cooled off. And now the buffs are coming in. In short, these buffs made Bayonetta's kit a lot more functional. Her up tilt and jab now hits properly. Her dash attack and jab have more knockback. Her side special and up special also have less end lag, which is actually pretty big. Last but not least, her counter now freezes opponents for longer. This is pretty big because the window was previously so small that Bayonetta's counter was hardly useful. She still has a recovery that's easy to frame and issues against zoners, but she's mid-tier now for sure. So if we're talking about much played and hated Smash 4 top tiers, we can't miss Rosalina and Luma. Rosa also ruled the Smash 4 landscape, for that she was punished. Like Bayo, Rosa got a few nice buffs to bring her back up to speed. One of Rosa's biggest changes is that her dash attack can now start combos. Luma also has less health but responds more quickly. Believe it or not, this is a clear buff. Most of the time, the optimal strategy is to knock Luma off the stage rather than drain its HP. Her forward air has less end lag and detects the ledge faster. Her grab has increased speed, making it better in neutral, and her forward smash kills earlier with Luma. Add all of these little things together, and you're gonna bump the Celestial Duel up a tier. Game. Last, but mostly definitely not least, we have Ryu and Ken. These two got buffed all the way to high tier on most of the pro tier lists, Ken especially. The Nintendo Balance team really targeted the identity of the two Street Fighter characters, their combo game. The biggest change was probably in form of their heavy jab. In case you're behind the times, Ryu and Ken have heavy and light versions of their tilts and jabs. Their heavy jab now has nearly fixed launch distance, making some kill confirms reliable and almost any percent past a certain point. Lots of characters in Smash need to kill within a certain time window or else their weak moves knock back too far to lead into their kill move. At that point, they have to try and land a raw, strong move in neutral. Most strong moves have lots of end lag, so that's risky. Ken and Ryo don't have to struggle with that. Now let's talk some combos. They have combos out of neutral airs, up tilts, down tilts, their special inputs, and more. Did we mention that they have combos that can lock you in shield stun until they break your shield? To top it all off, they both got stronger projectiles too. Ken gets a nudge above Ryo on our list because his kill confirms are stronger. His Shoryuken also drops kills a lot less and his Hadouken moves faster, allowing for stronger projectile mix-ups. With the Street Fighter Kings, we're wrapping up the low tier meta recap. Hey, feel free to tell us what you think in the comments below. What do you think is that sleeper low tier that's gonna rise up? Who do you think is gonna be stuck in low tier hell until the end of time? How will Banjo, Kazooie, and Hero do? Hey, tell us about it in the comments, blow off some steam. Hey guys, this is Keith Allen. Hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, hey, follow me on my Instagram. I would love to connect with you guys and stay tuned for more coming out.